Welcome to Time for Hope, a faith-based mental health program. Join our host, certified clinical mental health counselor and Christian psychotherapist, Dr. Frida Cruz, and her guests as they discuss real-life issues and offer expert clinical advice and solid biblical application for any and all life situations. Now, here's the host of Time for Hope, Dr. Frida Cruz. It's always a great pleasure to have you join me for another edition of Time for Hope. I'm Dr. Frida Cruz, your host, and today I am pleased to welcome Leighton and Tammy Covage from Greenville, South Carolina. Leighton is the chairman of Cirrus Investments, and Tammy joins him with Cirrus and small businesses of her own. For the next two weeks, Leighton, Tammy, and I will be discussing their stories related to their previous marital failures and how they were brought together in a loving marriage and a close walk with the Lord. As we go deeper into their story, direction and ideas will emerge on how a daily devotion time together, including reading God's Word, prayer, and communication with each other helps couples build stronger marriages. To learn more, stay with us. And Tammy and Leighton, it's great having you on Time for Hope. It's a privilege to be here. I did give up <laughs> on the book that I have encouraged you to, to write. Uh, it, um, I know a lot of the story that we're going to hear today, and I think it should be in book form for couples um, because um, it really reveals in the final analysis, and your book would reveal, will, would reveal that as you unveil your stories, that God does, can do, and does marvelous things yes. when two people <clears throat> are, however many, but especially in a marriage, are willing to to follow him and uh, do his will. Uh, it actually takes a surrendering, doesn't it? And does. saying, Lord, I will do what you want me to do. It does. That sure does. Absolutely. And, and, and we, we have uh, uh, taken your words and we're, we're, we committed ourselves yesterday. We're going we're gonna to get the book moving forward. And um, it's, it's just an honor and a privilege. And when you called us uh, to come over, it was a monumental moment for us, and we're very thankful to be here, and hopefully that we can discuss some of the things that we knew took us from from uh, despair to, to hope, mm -hmm. like the name of your show, yeah. you know, which is so great. You know, throughout our lives, and that's any of us, uh, we experience times of desperation, uh, as you have mentioned. Mm -hmm. We experience times of not understanding what's going on mm -hmm. and even what God is uh, uh, wanting to do in our lives. But I do know this, God has, he, he brought each one of us into the world with a destiny of his own. That's true. And we're not always on that path. We're not. And he has to find ways to get us on the path mm -hmm. to our God-ordained destiny. And so it's sometimes it's through failure. That's the reason that I'm naming this show From <laughs> Failure to New Beginnings. Because with God, I have always found uh, after failure, there can be new beginnings. So what do either of you have to say about that? Well, for me, if I could maybe go first, Tim, sure, I, sure. I, think, uh, I think most of us live uh, a distance sometimes away from God's very best. And, and the failure, the temporary defeats that we go through sometimes will throw us into despair. And we, we really are just not being thankful and going closer toward Him. And, and um, my life, I, I like to tell people I, I, didn't, I didn't really have any excuses. You know, I brought my problems on myself, and I, and I began to realize uh, through what we've been through that um, the joy and the peace and the happiness that you get is, is really driven by maybe first being thankful for what you already have. Right. And um, um, I think Tammy would agree we've, we've all gone through uh, issues, and uh, we see in our friends, our family, everyone has something they want to work for and, 
and uh, get better at. Mm -hmm. And you know, when I mentioned failure, going mm -hmm. from failure mm -hmm. to new beginnings, we can fail in lots of ways, but I know that you two each have had failed marriages previous right. to the right. marriage right. that right. you're in. Right. And of course, that's called divorce. Mm -hmm. And right. uh, I've counseled enough people going through divorce that mm -hmm. most of the time somebody hurts really bad uh, right. in a divorce right. situation. And I do know that the children very often mm -hmm. uh, are the fallout, as it were, right. uh, in divorce. And mm -hmm. um, so. Yes, um, and sometimes we can't avoid failing right. uh, in a marriage or in some other ways. I've told many people in counseling, it's not always the worst thing that can happen to fail. Uh, you might need to fail right. in this particular uh, thing that you right. you know mm -hmm. that you're involved in. Right, and we don't want to take anything away from um, that divorce it can be a sad thing. It, hurt, it affects a lot of lives, and um, God basically took, which I've, I didn't coin this phrase, but He took our mess and turned it into our message. And um, so we figured out a way to come together, and one thing that we say is uh, through what we went through, what we learned to do, um, we came together and went vertical, and so we started looking up towards God, and it was, we've been doing our Bible studies together and our our time together for about eight years, and it has been life-changing for us. You know, um, I'd like to know how you two met. Did you know each other before the divorces? Or A, a friend introduced us, and um, we both know, knew that our lives were in turmoil, and it was, uh, truthfully, it was, it was we, we met, we, you know, we, we realized we liked each other, and then yeah. after about two years, after every, you know, it was, it was kind of like, you know, he, he was already on his way to divorce. I was, I was too, and it was, um, and after two years, once, you know, my divorce was final, um, we started seeing each other, mm -hmm. and um, God just kind of brought us together. I had prayed, you know, dear Lord, after a 20-year marriage, I don't want to be single, and. Um, didn't know what to do, mother of four children. And um, I just said the prayer, you know, Lord, it's not who I choose. Can you bring me the perfect man that you would have for me? And um, I believe that that's what happened. We get many, many prayer requests into Time for Hope of people that are praying the same prayer, that God right. will bring a godly man or godly woman uh, into their lives. They're lonely. Uh, and they don't want to be alone. And right. uh, he heard your prayer. Mm -hmm. He brought a big man into your life. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. And when you have a blended family, you know, seven kids between us, um, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of lives to blend. And um, you know, it's it's just been a an exciting journey. It's it's uh, from you know from the time we got married. Um, to the to the current day, uh, we've we've uh, you you just learn you learn to communicate and you know I think I mentioned when we when we first spoke that what's one of the biggest things that marriages don't do that we hear even from our friends they don't communicate not to mention pray together and sharing God's word and um, so we kind of see it as as our our insulation it's our safety net God is our safety net against all of the, the perils of the world. You know, we need God in our lives, and we see that every day. Well, and the, the thing is, He's a merciful God. He's a compassionate God. Right. Uh, and He's faithful to forgive um, and help us forgive ourselves. And then also, He says when we pray, He's going to hear us if we believe, if we believe. Right. That's right. And... Um, one thing is the scripture where two or more are gathered. Mm -hmm. So we realized it wasn't just us sitting there. You know, God was there in the midst with us, and we felt it. We felt it. We, so so uh, were you gradually led to um, have your time, your, your devotional time or your time with the Lord or in the Word together, 
Uh, were you having it separately before you were led to to join together uh, with it? The process is, is uh, humorous now to me, but um, Tammy and I probably had both been successful in different ways in our lives, in business, and um, in 2008, when the world was coming apart, we were we were distraught with what was going on from the from the banking and the people that needed uh, us to you know, bring money toward them, and uh, the business we were involved in was, were, were stumbling, uh, and a lot, of, a lot of scariness. And we went to church, and um, I heard a sermon sit beside her that I was a little bit anxious because I thought the sermon had been doctored with Tammy's help because it was, <laughs> I felt like it was directed at me, you know, always wanting more, always uh, not satisfied, and Instead of being grateful, I've been, I've been very blessed, but uh, almost like spoiled. And I don't really have any excuses for a, for a lot of things I'm not proud of. But, but um, that, so when we left the church, Tammy assured me she hadn't gone and talked to the preacher. And um, <laughs> so I, so uh, just like some typical type A guy, I decided that we're going to have a business meeting about God, and we're going to have it on Monday morning, and it's going to be. You know, like at a, in a conference room in our house, it's really <laughs> the kitchen table. So, so I get the, I'm, I'm going to have this meeting. So the first thing I do is I take the church bulletin um, from, a church, uh, from a church here in Greenville, and I start going over the bulletin to study God with her, and, and we're, we're going to have a devotion, and we're going we're gonna to journal it, and we're going to take notes. And that began um, uh, going on eight years ago, and now... Um, it's, 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 it's come to be something that we really enjoy, and um, I know I've changed, and she has too over it, and we've seen a lot of change and, and help, and, and we, don't, we don't feel so wonderful about ourselves that we want to talk about this. We, we know this is going to help some people, and there's people out there that if they would just get, learn this skill set and translate kind of a business acumen into a deliverable in, in, in the in the spiritual world and grow closer to Christ, um, I think it's I think it's phenomenal. And you know we're going to have to go out on that and come back and okay. uh, I want to hear more uh, right. about this or go back over some of it or something like that. But it is time for a break and we'll be right back. Failure can wear many faces. When I opened my dictionary for a definition of failure, the first one given was to fall short of success. Others included to fail a test. And I could add to fail various tests that we confront in life. Failure is an inevitable reality of life. It can be a business, moral, marital, or spiritual failure. But whatever kind of failure, I hasten to add that it can become a bridge to exciting new beginnings. As with most life situations, we are responsible for the actions we take in response to what has been and what is for the present. The past cannot be changed, but it can hold secrets to be gleaned as we deal with the present and look towards the future. Believing with God's help that we can put the past behind us instead of concluding that having failed in the past, we will continue to fail. We need to ask ourselves such questions as, why did I do what I did? What could I change or should change to avoid the same failure again? What can I learn from my failure that can help me move towards the future with a hopeful and positive attitude? Was my failure a moral or spiritual failure that I need to seek God's and others' forgiveness for? Have I forgiven myself for my failure? Getting honest with ourselves and seeking God's grace and help to gain the insight and confidence to make the necessary changes to move towards a more meaningful and 
purposeful life can give us the strength to chart a course towards moving from failure to new beginnings. And I suggest that you get into God's Word and allow the Holy Spirit to guide you to promises and directions that can give you permission to put the past and your failures behind you. A great place to start in God's Word, the Holy Bible, can be found in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 29 and verse 11, where the Creator God relates, For I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. With these kinds of promises, you can take up your bed and walk towards the future. We appreciate your staying with us on Time for Hope. Today, my guests are Tammy and Leighton Cubbage, and they're business people, which is unusual for us to have on Time for Hope. Of course, the ones that I have on Time for Hope and are authors and uh, ministry leaders and so forth. I count that a business also, God's business. What I do, I count as God's business. But they actually are involved in secular businesses and have this wonderful story to tell of their relationship uh, with each other and with the Lord. And um, I, it, I count it a privilege that we have you guys on Time for Hope. And we're, I've chosen to title it since you, you're going to write the book, but you haven't written it That's yet. Right. I've chosen uh, to title the program From Failure to New Beginnings. And that's your stories. Uh, and I want to pick up uh, where we went out, uh, Leighton, with what you were saying. I like the way you said yeah. you decided you were going home and call a business meeting yeah. with your wife. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> uh, you know, it, it makes me laugh. You think about a sort of a type A guy in business and in, in my life. And then so I knew after this sermon that I, I, I was void and uh of, of some major components. So I thought it would be smart for us to have a business meeting and sit down at the kitchen table and make notes and, and drive, drive like we drive processes and systems in business to get closer to God. It, and, uh, cause you I, knew that there I, was something I knew, uh, missing I between you and God, didn't I you? Did. I did. I don't have any excuses. My father was a, 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 a Sunday school teacher in a little country church down in Oswego, South Carolina. Um, I always had every opportunity. I've had some great mentors, but I knew I wasn't doing enough of my part. And I knew that... Um, did you find out in the <clears throat> process it's not what you do... It's uh, surrendering uh, Can, to God and what he wants yeah. to do with your life. You know, yeah. you make that point so well because just even in the way I was going about, let's have a business meeting to get to God, was like I was in charge of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> so, and we know we're not really in charge of... No, <laughs> we're a, not in charge of anything. I sort of found that out, run, but um, Tammy... Tammy um, Tammy tells the story of that first morning, and um, it's 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 pretty pretty uh, enlightening on who, really who I am and the mistakes I was I was rolling on. So, right, right. We um, that morning we sat down, and so he had the Bible and he had the church bulletin, you right, know, right. and I think we had a little devotional too. So yeah. we found a scripture in the church bulletin. And um, he goes, okay, so we have a scripture. So we looked at the scripture and we read the scripture. And then, okay, well, now we should pray together. Right. So we grabbed each other's hands and, and we had never really prayed together too much before. And so we hardly really even knew what to say. So we just started. We just started. Yeah. And, um, well, and we knew. Well, the Holy Spirit's our leader in that direction anyway. Right. That's right. And, yeah. our, um, and so our joint spiritual walk kind of started that that morning, mm -hmm. you know, and then, and then it grew, it has, um, it's grown to where, you know, now we can't wait to wake up yes. and, and go to God mm -hmm. with Thanksgiving. And, um, and that is quite a testimony, but I want to go back. Okay. What did you discover during that process, uh, Leighton, about yourself? You've mentioned a little about it and about God. 
I think I think the biggest thing that that I can remember, um, uh, I was a, a, a college football player and I didn't play much, and I can remember the the Fellowship of Christian Athletes meeting in our dorm, and I can remember hoping they wouldn't see me as I walked by, and I was kind of fleeing from 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 that, and uh, and I think. I'd always been afraid of God from a standpoint of what he was going to make me do. Instead of loving me and being a father, it was almost like it was like a, uh, someone who was going to condemn. And, 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 and So some of those type of, of frameworks, what, what I've learned now is that to, to go to God with thanksgiving and, 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 and then the hope's created from there and the hope and, uh, and pulling your life together. Tammy calls it, Getting under God's umbrella, and I think that for for me, I can understand, um, uh, you know, that when you give love, it comes back to you, and and when you, you know, th there's not many ways that you could not start your day by writing down your blessings, praying, holding your wife's hand, uh, praying, and, and and then go out and not be encouraged in this world. And we we think about this process, and we have a system. Um, but we'd be glad to teach and show to folks. But it's uh, it's really changed our life, and it's and, and we've 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 been able to share with, with a few people. But we didn't really want to uh, come out like we're great and we you know we've done so well. Mm -hmm. uh, we just wanted to do. We wanted to be able to to say here's where we were, and you know what? Mm -hmm. Here's and, where we are. Yeah, and now and I like your title, and it you know it has been a journey and a, syst a process over these years. Well, um, you, um, we're going for our next show, mm -hmm. uh, our second week with you. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, your pro, uh, your right. actual your program or your directions right. and so forth that you. But you've grown into that. We're talking about the beginnings right. of right. it right. now. Right. But right. you know what you said. Uh, there was something resonated with me, and I've been really talking a lot about it lately. And that is so many people. Uh, see God the way you saw Him yeah. and think He's just waiting with this hammer or something right, to right, clobber you right, over the head, right. rather than the mercy and the merciful and compassionate God waiting on you to turn to Him and right, ask Him right, right, for help right. and also being willing uh, to do what He would have us do. That's, that's right. So yeah. I, I'm really happy to get yeah. that in. Well, it's, it's, and also, yeah. I've said this to mm -hmm. you, and you were man enough to take it, and I appreciate mm -hmm. that. I want to give you credit for it. I have surmised the whole time I've known you two that Tammy's been the leader in this, and that she had a lot to do with Leighton making some powerful there changes. Was. She she confronted me in ways that I probably weren't direct, but there were ways that sort of she took the air out of the room and said, you know, this is what we need to do, and you know, and. Um, Directing my past, and it was, it, it, she's she's helped change my whole life, and uh, and this process I think is a great one where maybe you take someone who feels too good about himself and brings him back to reality. But God has continued to prosper you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, you have right. to admit, uh, and you would want to admit that oh, yes, that I mean, we're, uh, not, we're not it, ashamed of that. It didn't mm -hmm. change any business. You have some great business. Uh, <laughs> Directions that could be yes, followed, yes, and and you, I'm sure, uh, Tans, uh, Tammy, that mm -hmm. would be true too. Uh, but you've experienced, you've continued to experience God's blessings and prosperity. Okay. So uh, it, you can have it all that way if you're willing to look to God and ask Him for it, well, right? Yes, ma'am. It's 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 a lot stronger to go out in a positive uh, way after getting up from our from our Bible study that, and face the world. Uh -huh. I mean, it yeah. really is. Yeah, every day. And we're going to hear about yes, that next week as, I, as you two sit there. And I have some things <laughs> to share from some of our viewers. And then we'll, uh, we'll hear more uh, about your devotional program for couples right. uh, in our show for next week. 
And I do have uh, this from a viewer, dear Dr. Frieda. I need prayer for restoration of my marriage of four years. My husband is having an affair with another woman. We have a 19 month old daughter. Please pray that God will touch his heart and that he will see that what he is doing is wrong. Pray that God will give me strength to walk in peace. Oh, what a prayer request. She's right on target uh, during this difficult time. And believe it or not, God can give us peace right in the midst of a difficult time. Um, and so she's not asking uh, for anything that God is not willing uh, to give. And be assured that we take these prayer requests to our Heavenly Father, whom we know is able and willing to intervene in these kinds of situations. And then I have a, a, an encouraging note. Dear Dr. Frieda, I just wanted to thank you for a tremendous program. Many of my friends and I have been watching Time for Hope this past year and have come to know Christ because of the program. This is such an answer to prayer. Uh, my staff and I meet uh, for prayer uh, on Monday mornings, and we take up uh, these prayer requests. I take them up uh, all the time, and to know, and we've been praying for those that are seeking salvation, and to know that uh, some have found the Lord is so, it's worth it all. It takes a lot of work to put this program across the world and a lot of money. And we are just so thankful that this is worth it all when we get uh, a letter or a note like this. Thank you again for having this ministry. And we give God all the praise, all the honor, all the glory for this ministry. And thank you for that note of encouragement. And we look forward to you joining us again next Next week, uh, as we rejoin Tammy and Layton, um, and how you as a couple can build a time of devotion uh, with the Lord together. A free fact sheet that contains additional information about today's topic is available upon request from our ministry. You can also receive a copy of today's resource for a contribution of any amount to the Time for Hope ministry. Call us at 800-669-9133. Write us at Post Office Box 2169, Spartanburg, South Carolina, 29304. Or visit our website at timeforhope.org. When you call or write, prayerfully consider a donation to our ministry. Our ministry's mission is to offer hope to discouraged and hurting people. As we continue to give out messages of hope, a financial gift of any amount to support this ministry will be greatly appreciated. When you do this, you are joining us in offering hope to many viewers seeking help and hope for their situation. This will also enable us to inform and inspire some viewers to expand our mission as they learn and in turn can minister more effectively to hurting people around them. Until next time, have a great week, and remember, it is time for hope.